हेलो डियर ऑल दिस इज सदानंद कुमार मलिक वेलकम्स यू ऑल इन एंटायर फिजिक्स एंड इन टूडेज क्लास वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द सॉमर फील्ड फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन मॉडल मीन्स हियर वी हैव टू स्टडी अबाउट द बिहेवियर ऑफ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन विद इन द सॉलिड गिवन बाय द एक्सप्लेनेशन गिवन बाय सॉमर फील्ड सो हियर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टडी द बिहेवियर ऑफ अ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन इन साइड द सॉलिड देन लेट एस ट्राई टू ड्रॉ अ स्पेसमैन ऑफ अ सॉलिड सो सपोज वी हैव अ सॉलिड सपोज वी हैव कंसिडर्ड अ टू डायमेंशनल फिगर हियर सो सपोज दिस इज अ स्पेसमैन ऑफ अ गिवन सॉलिड ऑब्वियसली फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सॉलिड्स इट इज़ क्लियर दैट सॉलिड मीन्स हैविंग अ डेफिनेट शेप एंड साइज एंड वाई इट हैज़ अ डेफिनेट शेप एंड साइज बिकॉज ऑफ द रेगुलर अरेंजमेंट ऑफ एटम्स विद इन द सॉलिड सो हियर इफ वी कंसिडर द स्पेसिमेन ऑफ सॉलिड दैन इन एनी ऑफ द डायरेक्शन अर्बिटरी वी कैन कंसिडर एटम्स शुड बी अरेंज इन अ रेगुलर मैनर एंड एटम्स आर कंसिडर्ड एज द पॉजिटिव आयंस इन साइड द सॉलिड मीन्स मेटल so suppose these are the atoms positively charged atoms and obviously suppose the solid is conductor suppose the solid is conductor then a lot of free electron will be available there so suppose these are the free electrons within the solid so suppose this is the many number of free electrons which are present within the solid so suppose these are the electrons now if we want to study the behavior of a free electron then from these free electrons we have to consider any of the any of the one electron here so suppose let us consider a electron that is circled by the red color so suppose we want to study about this free electron about this free electron we want to study so here actually this free electron will be affected by two types of forces so first force because two types of forces are there so first force will be the force of repulsion the force of repulsion and for which this force of repulsion will be acted upon the electron so here actually because of the neighboring electrons because of this neighboring electrons this free electron will experience a force of repulsion and this force of repulsion will try to escape will try to push this electron so that it can leave the surface of the solid so here this force of repulsion is due to the due to the neighboring electrons neighboring electrons and this force of repulsion will try to push the electron so that it can leave the surface of solid and now let us discuss about the other type of forces so here if this is the free electron then around this free electron obviously there are many number of positively charged ions so suppose this is the positively charged ions so due to this positively charged atoms or ions this free electron will experience a force of attraction means here the second thing is the second type of force is the force of attraction force of attraction and this force of attraction are due to the positively charged ions which are arranged regularly inside the solid so it is due to the positively charged atoms and if we discuss about the problem let's try to compare the force of repulsion and the force of attraction suppose this is the force of attraction fa and this is the force of repulsion fr now let us try to compare them so obviously if suppose which is not possible if suppose the force of repulsion is more than the force of attraction then what will happen actually in case of more repulsive force as compared to the attractive force this electron will be pushed 
so that so pushed that it can leave the surface of solid it means that all the free electrons will be pushed by the neighboring free electrons it means that after some times uh, after some time all the free electrons will be knocked out from the solids and it is not possible it means that it is not possible so here this force of attraction should be greater than the force of repulsion and obviously as we know if we want to take a free electron outside from the surface means if we want to knock out a free electron within the solid then we have to apply a sufficient amount of force it means that the force of attraction is very much large as compared to the force of repulsion so according to sommerfeld according to sommerfeld according to sommerfeld we can write the force of repulsion may be neglected as compared to the force of attraction the force of repulsion may be neglected as compared to the force of attraction so this is the one thing for sommerfeld model now let us discuss about the second thing actually inside the solid atoms are arranged in a regular manner from here it is clear that the atoms are arranged arranged in a regular manner and actually in this figure the position of atoms are given as are shown as very distant from each other but actually it is not so these atoms are very close to one another these atoms are very close to one another that's why the free electron experience the uniform force of attraction everywhere inside the solid means this electron may be found anywhere but it will experience a this free electron may be found anywhere inside the solid but it will experience the same or uniform force of attraction so the second thing is that let's try to write the second thing is the force of repulsion the force of repulsion experienced by a free electron is of uniform nature uniform nature it means that everywhere the equal magnitude of force will be applied on a free electron so these was the two concept or two theories which is given by sommerfeld to explain the behavior of a free electron within the solid now because we know electron is a spin half particle we know electron is a spin 1 by 2 particle spin 1 by 2 means either it can perform the clockwise rotational motion or anti clockwise rotational motion or spin motion we can say so if a electron perform clockwise spin motion then its spin quantum number will be plus 1 by 2 and if it perform the anti clockwise spin motion then the spin quantum number may be minus 1 by 2 so by this way electron is a spin half particle means if we consider the magnitude only then we will find 1 by 2 for both of the condition so for a spin half particle it will follow or it will obey the fermi dirac statistics means here within the solid if we want to study the distribution of this free electrons in different different energy states why this electron will have different energy states because of their energies means it means that free electron may be stationary or also it can move with some velocity with some more velocity so here on changing the magnitude of velocity 
it is found that the energy of free electrons are differ <clears throat> so finally we can say within the solid the free electron may be found in different different energy states so here how we can distribute the free electrons in different different energy state actually this law this distribution law is given by fermi dirac okay in statistical physics actually we have three distribution laws first maxwell boltzmann distribution law second bose einstein distribution law and third is fermi dirac distribution law so here the electron is a spin half particle so it will obey fermi dirac distribution law fermi dirac distribution law and now let's see what is the fermi dirac distribution law here so actually this distribution law will give the probability to find the free electron in a particular energy state it means that if we try to find the probability to find the electron in the energy state e suppose e is a e is an energy state and the probability to find the particle in this energy state is pe then it will be equal to 1 upon exponential e raised to power e means the energy state at where we are trying to find the probability minus ef ef is a fermi energy whole upon kt where small k is boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature plus 1 so this is the formula now let us define each and every terms used in this formula so here ef is the fermi energy fermi energy actually fermi energy means the maximum possible energy of free electron within the solid means if the electron is present inside the solid then its energy maximum energy may be ef fermi energy and above this energy no energy is allowed to the free electron if it is present inside the solid now second thing is k small k is boltzmann constant it is called boltzmann constant and its value is 1.38 into 10 raised to power minus 23 joule per kelvin this is the value of boltzmann constant and t is absolute temperature t is absolute temperature of the solid means here the temperature is considered in kelvin temperature is considered in kelvin now here let us define some terms related to the energy of free electron within the solid so here let us try to draw the energy band diagram of electron within the solid so here suppose this is the surface level of solid so here along y axis let us consider the energy axis suppose so this is the energy suppose and along the x axis this is the x axis suppose so here this is the energy zero okay now corresponding to this zero this is the one line means all those free electrons which are completely static means stationary don't have any amount of energy those electrons will be represented at the lowest level means ground level so if some electron which have some more energy as compared to these free electrons then they will be shown in shown in the other state for more energy they will be shown in the other state by this way we have many number of energy states within the solid and by this way we have a maximum allowed energy for the free electron so suppose this is the maximum allowed energy for the free electron that is denoted by ef fermi energy so here this is the fermi energy level it means that if the electron is present within the solid then it should have the maximum energy which is which may be equal to ef so by this way there are different type of energy states and now actually suppose this is the surface of solid so here its energy is represented as es so es is the surface energy of the solid it means that if we want to knock out a free electron from fermi level to the surface of 
the solid means here suppose this electron wants to escape from the surface of this solid then we have to supply this amount of energy to the free electron and this amount of energy is known as work function phi so here this is the energy difference and it is known as work function phi so here let us define here the meaning of fermi energy ef the meaning of work function phi and the surface energy es so is it clear to all of you what is the meaning of fermi energy so here fermi energy means the maximum possible energy now let us try to define here fermi energy the maximum energy maximum energy which an which a free electron can acquire within the solid within the solid is known as fermi energy now second thing work function phi now actually from this figure it is clear that the work function phi is the difference between the surface energy and the fermi energy so here in other words we can define the work function phi is the required energy which should be supplied to a most energetic free electron within the solid so that it can escape from the surface of the solid so here work function means required energy required energy to a free electron to a most energetic most energetic free electron to knock out from the surface of solid surface of solid is known as work function so here and the surface energy surface energy may be defined as the energy needed to a static free electron means stationary free electron to leave the surface of solid this is known as surface energy so from this figure we can define as the work function phi is equals to es minus ef so this is a formula for work function here now let us try to find let us discuss about the law of distribution of free electron within the solid at different different temperature for different different energy levels so we will consider two cases the one case is for absolute zero temperature means in first case we have to consider t equals to zero kelvin and in second case we have to consider t is not zero but its value is more than zero kelvin so in these two cases we have to consider equation number 1 so here let us consider case first so here case first at absolute zero temperature absolute zero temperature means here if t is equals to zero kelvin then how we can write the distribution law so here in this case one we have two sub cases means first <coughs> if the energy level at where we are going to find the probability to find the electron is less than ef means suppose the energy level which we have considered here which is lower than the fermi energy level means suppose the energy level is considered anywhere suppose here which is lower than the fermi energy level then we are to find the probability at this energy level then obviously let us try to write this then we have so here if e is less than ef then probability to find the particle at energy level e will be equal to 1 upon e raised to power e minus ef upon k 
okay and t is considered as 0 so here 0 plus 1 now let's see here because dear all e is less than ef it means that this quantity will be negative this quantity will be here negative it means that we have the probability to find the electron at energy level e will be equals to 1 upon e raised to power negative upon 0 plus 1 let us solve it then we have 1 upon e raised to power negative upon 0 means we have negative infinite plus 1 let us solve it then we have probability p is equals to 1 upon e raised to power infinite means 0 plus 1 so here finally we have the value 1 means the probability to find the electron at energy level e will be equal to plus 1 means if we consider the energy level which is lower than the Fermi energy level then the probability to find the particle at that energy level will be 100 percent it means that in this figure if the energy level is considered below the Fermi energy level then the probability to find the electron at where is 100 percent it means that up to the Fermi level EF up to the Fermi level EF all the energy states will be filled by the electrons now let us try to find if the energy level is considered above the Fermi energy level suppose anywhere here then what should be the probability to find the electron at this energy level so let us try to find its value so here in the second sub case b if the energy level e is greater than ef then how, how will be the probability to find the electron here so actually the probability to find the electron at energy level e will be equal to 1 upon e raised to power e minus ef upon k into t means 0 plus 1 let us solve okay so here if energy level is more than ef it means that this quantity will be positive now here let us solve it then we have the probability is equal to 1 upon e raised to power positive upon 0 plus 1 means here we have e raised to power positive infinity plus 1 and e raised to power infinity means infinity and infinity plus 1 means again infinity so here finally we have 1 upon infinity means here the probability of energy level e is more than suppose ef in this case we have the probability is 0 because 1 upon infinity is 0 this equation indicates that the probability to find the electron at the energy level e is considered above the fermi level ef then there is no possibility to find the electron at where it means that if the energy level is considered above the fermi energy level means here then there is no possibility to find the free electron it means that between ef to es there is no energy level which is allowed to the free electrons now let us consider the case second it means that if the temperature t is more than 0 kelvin so let us consider case second here so case second at t is more than 0 kelvin then what will happen so here in this case let us consider if suppose the considered energy level e is exactly equal to ef means here if you want to find the probability to if you want to find the probability to find the electron at the fermi level then what should be its value so here our formula is for the probability suppose probability e is equals to ef then we can write 1 upon e raised to power ef minus ef upon k t plus 1 now obviously ef minus ef means it will become 0 so here we have 1 upon e raised to power 0 upon something means 0 plus 1 so here we have finally 1 upon 2 so the probability to find the electron at an energy level e which is just equals to ef it will be 1 upon 2 means 50 percent probability so here if the temperature is considered as more than the absolute temperature absolute zero temperature 0 kelvin then it means that the probability to find the particle at the fermi energy level means at 
this fermi energy level the probability to find the particle is 50% in which case when the temperature is then 0 kelvin so by this way we have some observations so suppose here this is the first observation suppose equation number 1 this is the second observation suppose equation number 2 and this is the third observation suppose equation number 3 so by using this first second and third condition let us try to draw the probability distribution graph probability energy graph so here on changing the energy because here from equation 3 on changing the energy the probability goes to change here so let us try to find the probability energy distribution graph so which type of graph we have here so let us try to draw the graph so suppose along x-axis the energy is considered because corresponding to the energy the probability goes to change so in y-axis let us consider the probability to find the electron at where so suppose this is the probability axis pe then obviously the energy will have the value 0 and the mid value means the boundary value have ef fermi energy so actually from case 1 from case 1 means when the temperature was 0 kelvin then which type of graph we will find so if the energy e is less than ef the probability is 100 percent and if the energy e is greater than ef then probability is 0 percent then this type of graph we have here this type of graph we will have so here suppose the probability is 0 at this point suppose this is the probability 1 by 2 and suppose this is the probability 1 so if this is the boundary point suppose this is the boundary point then obviously if the energy is less than fermi level ef then the probability is 1 means here at each and every point the probability is 100 percent before the energy ef similarly when the energy is greater than ef means along this direction the probability suddenly becomes zero means here all the points we will find here suppose this is the points now let us try to draw the graph here so which type of graph we will find so here this type of all the points should be connected sequentially so this type of graph we will find so this type of a step this type of a step we will find so this graph is for when t is equals to 0 kelvin so this type of graph is found but actually practically the graph of probability energy is not such such type because if we consider the temperature which is more than the 0 kelvin then we have at the fermi level it will become 50 percent means 1 by 2 then practically this type this graph is found as suppose this is the in this in the same graph let us try to find so suppose this is the graph for t equals to 0 kelvin and if we consider the temperature t is more than 0 kelvin then which type of graph we have so obviously if the temperature is more than ef sorry if the uh, energy is more than fermi energy then its value the probabilities values is 1 and if it is greater than ef then its value is 0 but when the energy is exactly equal to the fermi level then its value is 1 by 2 it means that corresponding to ef the value of probability is 1 by 2 now let us try to find the graph for this type of case so here actually this type of graph we will find here practically this type of graph we will find so this is the tactical graph of Sommerfeld model so here this is the graph for t is greater than 0 kelvin so this is the probability energy graph by which we can understand the probability to find the particle means the probability to find the free electron in different different energy states so here by this way the Sommerfeld model has been
completed and here one demerit of this model actually with the help of this model means on the theory of this model it is impossible to explain why on increasing the temperature the conductivity of conductor decreases but the conductivity of semiconductor increases means the conductivity of semiconductor conductivity of semiconductor is proportional to the temperature but the conductivity the conductivity of conductor is inversely proportional to the temperature means on rising the temperature the conductivity of semiconductor increases but on increasing the temperature the conductivity of conductor decreases the reason for this could not be explained by the Sommerfeld model. So this was the only one demerit of Sommerfeld model.